on the, off the grid further back or further forwards depending on what it is we're trying to achieve. Hi guys, I'm Sketty. Welcome to this tutorial. This time we're going to look at how to make your beats groovier using tools like velocity changes, swing and actual going into a lot more complex swing settings by doing it all manually. So let's get to it. Alright, so I've got a blank by, um, MIDI region here and, and I've got some music as well that I've set up previously. So a bass line, a piano line and because I'm working in the lo-fi area today, a little bit of crackle as well from some vinyl. So let's just listen to the music. <laughs> So that's what we're going to be working with to put a drum kit behind and it's my favourite kit at the moment that I'm using, the Arizona kit that if you've got Ableton Live 10, uh, it might be in 9 as well, I'm not sure, but in the drum essentials pack that you can download, the acoustic Arizona kit, because it's a lot of fun to play with and I think it just sounds great out of the box with a little bit of processing, but these uh, options here like your reverb, overdrive and so on and so forth um, are great, the useful tools to make it sound a lot um, chunkier and hit hard in your mix. Anyway, so what I'm going to look at first is just some simple things where we can take a, a mechanical sounding uh, hi-hat rhythm, and, well not the open hi-hat there, uh, the closed hi-hat, make it sound a little bit more realistic as if a real drum was playing it. So I'm just going to draw some on the beat notes, like so, and I'm going to copy that for four bars. So this is basically, if I attach the click to it as well, so this is basically just a high on every single crotchet note or quarter note in the bar. Now that's not syncopation at all because it's just matching the um, time signature. Now technically the most simplest of uh, syncopations that you can do if you've ever wondered what syncopation is, is if you take the first and the third out and just have it on the second and the fourth and if you put the click in, that is now syncopation because it's not playing on every single beat that the time signature has designated, which this is in 4-4. Four, four. Um, so anything that's not on every single beat is getting into the realms of uh, syncopation. As we start to build this beat up, you'll start to see a lot of syncopation take place. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these into every eighth note, and we're going to listen to this back now, and it'll sound very mechanical because it's the same sample playing all the time. But a very simple way, straight away, to make this start to sound a little bit more human is just by changing the velocity of the off no um, the in-between notes, these eighth notes that are on the end of every beat. So if I just turn that down slightly, like so, and now we listen. And if I compare that to what it was before. I was just doing it undo and redo there to change. And, but you can hear the difference where it sounds a little bit more like a human player's playing. So if you were sat behind a drum kit, you wouldn't be hitting the high at, every, at the same loudness every single time. It's going to have slight differences. And you could go a lot further into this by making every single one different. And obviously we could actually change the feel of this by putting the accent on the off beat instead of on the on beat. And that's obviously going to change how it sounds as well. If we put it to click as well. It feels like more of it's got an up feel rather than a down feel. So I'm just going to undo what I did there. So we've got it as the down beat. Cool. And the next thing we can do as well is obviously add some 16th notes in there as well. And I'm just going to highlight all of the 8th notes, put them on the slightly more open hi-hat and make these a little bit more quieter as well. Copy them in there. And then duplicate these with four bars and then drag them down and now we can listen to what we see um, that the velocity changes but with 16th notes instead of just eighths. Cool, now I'm going to keep them as is, when, we, when I get to the more complex beat at the end it's not really going to have the 16th notes in but for what I'm going to do now to show you some swing sends, this is a, a little bit needed at the moment. So. 
Next thing, I'm just going to stick in. Yeah, I'm going to go for that snare. Now, a snare in this case, if we listen back to the beat, uh, sorry, the music as well. And with the hi hats there, straight away you can hear that human feel where it's a little bit more realistic than everything being at the same um, loudness. And if I actually quickly just turn everything up super loud. Okay, that's didn't mean to do that. There we go, that's better. And then listen to it with the music. Compared to... It sounds a lot more realistic and natural rather than it being like a machine's playing it. Well, the next thing we're going to do for this, I feel like the snare should set on every second and fourth beat in the bar, which if we listen to the music again... Yeah, you can, I can just feel that that snare drum's supposed to sit on that second and fourth beat. And I'm just going to duplicate those two bars that I've just done, just to make things quicker. That's one thing I recommend is try and learn the shortcuts of the DAW that you're working in as fast as possible, because it just speeds up the process. You don't want to be slowing yourself down working by having to do everything the long way around. Shortcuts, the more you know, the better and the faster you can work. So let's listen to this now with the snare drum in. Now in the case of snare drum, I'm not going to re really change the velocity of these because they're the sort of loudest beats along with the kick drums in the bar, uh, well in the groove, so it needs to sort of hit through against the music. But the hi-hats are there just to back that up, just to give it a little bit more feel behind the main groove. Now instead of me just doing all of this by itself like I usually do in tutorials, I'm going to be constantly doing this with the music because especially when you're building beats, you want it to match the music that you're um, playing along with. You don't want it to just be made in isolation and see if it fits with the music afterwards. If you're playing it along with the music, then you're going to get better beats in the long run. Because, for example, now that I listen to the kick, the kick is obviously going to hit on the first beat, like so. And then one on that um, and of one in the fourth bar as well. But if I listen to the piano, where that second piano chord in the bar is hitting, it seems to be on the end of two if we listen. So I think that's where the kick should match. So I'm going to stick a kick on every end of the second beat of each bar. And then we listen back to it now. And it's always useful in the last bar just to make a slight little bit of difference in sound. So that's why I put that beat on the uh, end of the first beat of the fourth bar, just to give it a little bit more difference. Now the next thing that I'm going to add in is on, in each other bar, so like the second and the fourth bar, is one extra kick drum. Now this is the thing with beats that I do notice from people that have sent me beats and from students as well, is sometimes it's... And I've been guilty of this in the past and still can fall into this trap is making the beat too complicated for what's needed. So we need to obviously look at making sure that the beat is tasteful to the music. So in this case, I'm only going to add one extra kick in the second and the fourth bar. And that's just after this um, second snare drum in each bar on the E of the beat. So one E and A. So it's hit there and there. Now if we listen back to it. do tell a lie just one more and that's on the one e and ah of the third beat in the fourth bar so if we listen back to that again cool now what i've already done in this is i've loaded up a swing setting which is logic 16 swing 62 and that's actually from the logic pro um, software, the swing settings within that. But if you actually want to access the swing settings, you just go to Groove and you can actually create your own grooves in this as well, which I might do towards the end of this tutorial with the complex beat that I'm going to make. But it's not complex, it's just the timing of it. Um, but yeah, these are all the swing settings I loaded in Swing 62. So that basically means that every, on the 16s, all of the in between, if we just zoom in here, so we've got 1, E, and A. So these two beats here, the 16th notes, even though these are all technically 16th notes, it's the uh, notes that wouldn't exist unless it was a 16th note pattern, they're going to get swung slightly. And we're going to actually listen 
to it being straight and then swung. So this is it straight. And then with the swing applied as well. As you can hear it's got that real shuffly feel almost like a triplety feel now instead of being very straight it's just started to move those in between 16 notes slightly out so this is it straight so it's got a little bit more of a jazzier swingier feel now cool now the only change i'm going to make to this before i start making it more complicated and I'm going to put it back to straight because of what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to add in some open hi-hats. There we go. And if we listen back to it now, actually I'll just turn the swing back on for it, for this one. Cool, so if you're just looking at the swing settings, that's the kind of stuff you can do. And that's really just between velocities and using either a swing or a straight setting. You can actually make nice fluid beats just by not having everything at the same loudness, slightly swinging it just off the grid. So it sounds like almost a real player is playing it. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into more like, like, a, like it sounds even more human feeling. Because uh, there's a really interesting thing that we can do to trick our brains is that if we hear a sort of a mistake, it, it stands out, but if we hear it more than once and it becomes a, a repeating mistake, our brain just thinks it's part of what should be in the music, especially when we're doing things over time. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of the 16th that I don't want. So all of these in between notes, because for this, I'm not going to need them, except for the final bar if I just delete that and make this easy for myself, I'm going to keep in that last 16th open hi-hat just because it's going to work for this groove and this one here as well. So we're going to listen to this now. Actually, I'm going to put that open hi-hat in the second bounce of the first one. Cool. Now I'm going to solo this by itself because what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute these and I'm going to get into uh, eighth note swinging, which is something that I haven't really, I've only started to use a lot, a lot more recently um, by when I've been making this kind of music. Because um, you tend to find, especially in EDM genres like dubstep, breaks, drum and bass, house, you want to stay away from the eighth note swing because that's where the uh, offbeat hi-hat, open hi-hat will hit. And if it's swung too far, it just makes you beat it doesn't sound good but for this kind of music that doesn't really have a locked down off beat you can start experimenting it with it quite a lot and all I'm doing is highlighting unfortunately I'm doing this a long way I could do this quicker by just doing it all in one bar but what I'm going to do is on a Mac you hold command down I think it might be control on Windows and if I hold command down then use the right arrow and then I'm just going to zoom in actually can see it's starting to move slightly off the grid. Now this is going to be more to taste rather than it being a set formula like I did in the swing setting here. But if we listen to this now, if I zoom back out, and I can keep doing that uh, swing a little bit more. It's got more of a sort of a, a, loll a lolling feel to it where it's sort of, it's not very straight but it's almost like a, a horse horse in a not a gallop but like a sort of fast walk where it's got that nice gallop um, oh, it's like a horse's hooves that sound to it or even like uh, when you hear a train go past that sort of chugga chugga sound excuse my terrible terminology here I was just trying to think on the fly what it could sound like or what it sounds like in uh, things in real life now the only other thing here is obviously we're gonna have to start matching up the other offbeat um, hits like these kicks here to that hi-hat, but let's hear what it sounds like against the music now 
And what I can hear is it's really forced those downbeats to sort of drive the rhythm, really pushes them f further forward, even though they haven't moved because these um, in-between notes have moved back. It's almost pushed the other ones forward, how our brain and ears perceive it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open back up the, the snare by turning that back on. And I'm actually going to bring this before the beat. So this is really going to start pushing the beat now. So if you ever hear of a, um, a conductor or a drummer talking about pushing and pulling the beat, this is what we're doing. We're pulling the beat with the hi-hats being further back, but we're pushing the beat with the snares being further forwards because they're technically happening before the beat. And it doesn't have to be too much, just a little bit. If I compare that to before where they were on the beat. It's really starting to push that beat forwards now. And then the last bit with the kick. Now this takes a little bit longer because I've got kicks all over the place. I've got kicks on the, um, the 16th on the beat and on the off, on off the beat as well. So I'm just going to grab the off beats for now, which is these ones. And then what I do is now that I've grabbed all of those, I zoom in to see where the high is and then just line them up with the hi-hat. Now, obviously with it being taught to try to make this as human as possible, they don't have to like totally line up. Um, but as long as they're close, because if you can imagine a real drummer playing, um, when, when they hit the hi-hat and they kick together, oftentimes it's not exactly on, uh, depending on how precise they're playing. <laughs> So I missed this. Yeah, I did the wrong one there. So let me just undo that. Bring this back. So it's always good to check to see if you've made any mistakes. And I did here. So this one needs to be brought. There we go. Back on the beat. Now the next ones I'm going to focus on is these on the beats, not the first beat in the bar. Because this is where it sounds like a mistake's happened. But obviously the more it repeats, the more it sounds natural. So these on the beat kicks here. I'm actually going to, like the snare, drag them just slightly before the beat. Which has now made these 16th note ones really apparent that they're the two on the grid now. And I'm just going to highlight them along with this high up because that's a 16th note one as well. And like the swing setting that I had before, this is going to go just after the beat, so like so. And what we can do now, just to compare the difference between the two, is if I just quantize all this back to like, so it's super on the grid and listen to that. So this is what we started with as a sort of uh, a very straight groove. And then this is what we've ended up with, with a lot of the different swing settings, the velocity settings, and obviously making it more human by actually going in really deep into each um, hit and moving that on the, off the grid further back or further forwards, depending on what it is we're trying to achieve. Cool. So there's a little insight, guys, into how to make your grooves a little bit more interesting, more unique, more human feeling. Obviously, this has to be taste to the music, to taste to the music that you're making. So don't just like if you're making a dubstep track thing, you can just start whacking all this kind of stuff on because if it doesn't fit with the actual music that's playing, it's going to sound messy. Um, so obviously, with jazzier styles like this, it does fit a lot better. Um, more straighter music, like rock music, for example, does require very on very straight and on the uh, beat rhythms whereas this way you can sort of swing and be a little bit more free-flowing and natural with it you can start to move things a little bit left and right um, and again like i said if obviously if you can do things more than once that same mistake it tricks your brain into thinking okay that was supposed to happen anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you have please like share um, subscribe to this hit the notification bell so you see these videos and uh, more of these tutorials in future 
Um, leave a comment below if there's anything that I've gone through that you're a little bit confused about or you want me to clarify in more detail or any recommendations for future tutorials that you'd like to see. Again, leave a comment below. Anyway, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, guys. Skeddy here. Do you want to learn how to... Or how about... Or maybe even... Well, I'm now giving online one-to-one -one tuition. The lessons will be entirely centered around what you want to learn. We can cover such things as making drums, bass, sound design, side chaining, mixing, composition, music theory, mastering, and much, much more. Maybe you just want to brush up on your production skills using Ableton Live or Logic, or whatever it is you want to learn, get in touch on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube to find out more information. Bonus, Bonus round. round. Every new student will get a free sample pack of their choice from my Exit Sounds sample label. So if this sounds good to you, and you want your tunes to sound less like, and more like, and get in touch to find out prices and book your first lesson now. See you soon. Everybody jump up, come on! Come on.